But since launching video, the community has come together more than ever before, which started this campaign. Uh, campaigns are hashtags that trend on LinkedIn. So you can follow them and it's a great reason and a way for new users to start creating and start finding their voice and sharing their voice. Businesses and individuals alike should join and be part of this dialogue, just like on Twitter, but instead this is LinkedIn. So this is how I got started. Hashtag let's get honest. This was a challenge to bring vulnerability and authenticity to the platform where we're not just all these buttoned up professionals that carry around this resume and abide by it 24 seven. We have real lives, real personalities, real strengths and weaknesses, challenges and opportunities. So I shared my, uh, challenge with multiple sclerosis and multiple disabilities because of the incurable disease applying for jobs and how every time I had to check that little box on the application that said I have a disability and I require reasonable accommodation, I never got a call back. And bringing this hard to digest topic to light in, a, in an easy way where people could relate to it and see, oh, but you look just like me, you know, I don't see what's going on underneath the, the surface. It brought a lot of people together and it really got these conversations going, which then I won. Uh, won this campaign out of 26 million exposures, um, introduced to um, Jeff Weiner himself, um, uh, connections to Huffington Post, Forbes. I mean, all of these amazing publications that you would never expect somebody in Wanakee, Wisconsin to have these kinds of opportunities. It was really brilliant. And, that was just the, the start of it all. So if you're new and you're, and you're curious about getting started and, and getting your feet wet, you should definitely jump in onto campaigns, which we'll talk at a later date, but until then. Um, then making connections all over the world. I started traveling like crazy, um, starting shows. I finally got to meet Michaela Alexis in person, which was like uh, the Britney Spears to me. Um, if you're from my generation, you get it. <laughs> it was a really awesome opportunity. And these people that you connect with through comments and then a connection request, and then they automatically feel like family. So when you're traveling for business, you always know somebody in the city you're traveling to. It's a beautiful thing. And then Miguel Forbes, yes. He, uh, Forbes Magazine reached out to me personally, uh, thanking me for the vulnerability and sharing such an important message, which was no, my uh, note to you that nobody is unreachable. If you want to get out there and you want to have a mentor of some form to propel your career in the right direction or to um, really level up or even clients that your dream clients, nobody is unreachable on LinkedIn. And then free press. Uh, LinkedIn is the epicenter for people searching by job title to find people to highlight in their data, on their podcasts, in their magazines. So if you're out there, the squeaky mouse gets the cheese, right? If you're creating content that's relatable, um, it's going to get found. And then, sorry if you can hear my dogs, I have a husky and a German shepherd and they like to talk to each other. The launch of my business in 2018, um, on March 29th, on my birthday, I launched my marketing agency, Stardust Creative, by May 1st. So about a month later, I had six clients already. By June 1st, a month after that, I had 12 clients. Um, and by July, I had over a million dollars in revenue generating opportunities come through in just three months. <laughs> Can you hear them, Kristen? You can, but it's okay. They're, they sound like they're having a great conversation. So. This is great, yes. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is real life Zoom meetings. <laughs> <laughs> great. Um, and then speaking opportunities. So whenever I speak in a, front of a live audience without the crazy dogs in the circus, I usually have three, or, three, three to five clients come out of the, the deal, which is a great exposure. It's a great opportunity to connect with people and that are interested in your topic. So being on LinkedIn and be, getting this free press, it also puts you in, in front of so many more opportunities. 
And I mean, I was in London, I was in Singapore, and this was all within one year, one year of being on LinkedIn. So I mean, when I say if this could work for me, it could really work for anybody. And then, um, so here we go. We're, we're flying into the LinkedIn 101 basics, right? Um, in December of 2016, Microsoft purchased LinkedIn. Um, and then it, right when I joined around there, there was about 300 million profiles. So now, as of um, a month ago, actually, when I started putting this, this uh, presentation together, there are over 675 million profiles. So that doubled in a matter of um, a couple years, which is a really amazing thing. And their goal is 3 billion uh, profiles. So we got a lot of growing to do. And right now is the time to join and get creating on the platform. Um, and then we've got, okay. So 167 states, they have a very, very, very large database and presence in India, which is interesting. Um, and it's the number one channel for B2B marketers. In fact, 97% of B2B marketers utilize it for their content marketing efforts. And then 80% of B2B leads come from LinkedIn versus the other social media platforms. So it's very, very, very effective. Um, another really awesome opportunity here is the fact that the online um, and mobile accessibility is huge. So you can shoot content from anywhere, you can connect anywhere, you can connect with anybody. They do this new um, opportunity, which is Find Nearby. Are you all familiar with Find Nearby? Kristen, have you heard of that? Um, we've, we've done a we've tried that at some of our um, monthly morning meetings. So some of the group might have heard of it, but some probably haven't. It's probably split. So I'm going to show it to you really quickly if I can on my phone. If you're on your, your application, right, you go to the bottom where, let's see if I can get this, um, the little people at the bottom and you're up here. Oh my gosh, um, there's a little bubble in the corner on your app. You click the bubble and it gives you these options to find nearby. And when you click find nearby and you turn it on, it uses Bluetooth to connect with other individuals. Now it's probably not gonna work for you right now. Obviously we're not all nearby within a, a certain uh, relative distance around us, but uh, it works really well for co connecting with strangers at conferences and events like that, as well as a QR code where uh, on the top of your, you, you see this little QR code here, it can, you can scan somebody's QR code to connect with them instead of searching for a million Amanda Johnsons or Steve Smiths and trying to find the right one. And you can also show your code. I just clicked at the top here to get my QR code up. So if somebody can scan mine or I can scan theirs. Anyways, that's just a fun little fact to move us forward. Um, and then if you guys, if anybody has questions at all, please drop them into the chat as well. Kristen, feel free to interrupt me at any time. I'd be happy to clarify anything. Um, should I pay for LinkedIn? This is a big question that a lot of people ask, right? Uh, I get this, this asked all the time. I am a premium user. I do purchase the, the premium business account for $59.99 a month. And I love it because it does give me additional opportunities. And I am not working for LinkedIn and I'm not getting paid or, or sponsored by LinkedIn for this discussion, but there are different benefits for using it. Recruiter Lite has an entire media platform for searching for talent. And career search seekers, uh, job seekers, they, there's a really great opportunity there that gets you on the top of lists in terms of when you're applying for jobs. Then we have, um, here, here's a little bit more of a breakdown here. So with premium, you have extended network access. So you can, it removes those search limitations where not as many people are hidden. 
Uh, and then in mail credits, you have additional in mail credits where you can connect and contact users that don't that you wouldn't normally be able to. You can see who's viewed your profile. Now, when this is the, the gold, These, this is solid gold information because when you see people who've been looking at your profile, there's a reason why they're looking at your profile. You came up in a search of some form, whether it was your title, it was information in your history, um, companies that you're connected to. So for me, those are always warm leads at that point in time. Um, and then you have that gold, the gold little checkbox on Melanie Dodaro's profile. You can see that, that uh, LinkedIn gold box. That also helps you stand out in the feed, um, which, which increases your click-through rates of your profile. And LinkedIn Learning Access. Lynda.com was my favorite online learning database. That's how I learned how to code CSS, HTML, all that jazz. It's free learning and you have over 13,000 pieces of content to learn from. Any topic and you, it's free. Hey Chantel, I'm gonna go back to the find nearby. We have a question that popped up in the chat. Oh so, yes. When you do the find nearby, do the people it is trying to find have to have location services on as well for it to find them? Yes. Okay. Get that GPS enabled. Yep. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So in the profile basics, Professional headshots get 14 times more profile views. This is data that is from LinkedIn itself. So do you have to get professional photos? No, you could probably makeshift something. You, everybody's got access to one of these these days and these take great quality. Um, you wanna have a color that pops in the feed. A lot of uh, people are seeing the trend of the circle around their photo, which is that click happy, um asset right so when you go into to instagram or facebook and you see that there's that highlighted rim of a picture it usually means there's a story there so that there's a reason for all of the science behind that and you can see the trends that happen um and then there's the banner image it's the banner image is your best asset it's the top real estate prime real estate on your linkedin profile so what you should do there is highlight your mission, uh, include a call to action. Why should people be connecting with you? Why should they reach out to you? And use a custom image. There's been a lot of science, uh, a lot of surveys done that show that people are more, um, they're not attracted to the stock photo images. In fact, it, it turns them away more than it does attract them. So use your own images. I have a couple examples here of Elena Cardone and Dave Asprey. Dave Asprey with Bulletproof. He's got his, his headline up there, his website. It shows that he is a thought leader with his book there. And in his background, his color that pops is his branded orange. He could not be more on brand with his active apparel and everything. And then you have Elena Cardone, who's amazing. She's a uh, Grant Cardone's wife. She's an amazing um, woman leader, female entrepreneur coach. So she's got her information there about her book that she had and the events that she holds. Just some good examples to get you your brain thinking about how to build that. So, uh, and I wouldn't be doing my community a favor if I wasn't telling you about them. Gravity Photo Company is an amazing resource for headshots. Uh, these are my personal brand shots, so you can include marketing content right next to where you are as a leader. And then Miriam Bolcher Photography is another local headshot photographer in the area. Then we have um, your headline. Your headline is another prime piece of real estate where in order to stand out, this is, this is a, a trick that a lot of people don't, haven't been using um, because they aren't aware that it's a trick. Well, Google's done a lot of research on the most clicked ads in their paid search campaigns. And if you capitalize each word, your click rate goes up exponentially. The same thing goes for profiles on LinkedIn. There's a direct correlation there. So when you capitalize each of these words, 
for example, Jackson Fonder and another, another really amazing local professional, nonprofit CEO fueled by community passion in Carmel Lattes, passionate visionary, visionary to end poverty. So he's not saying he's the president and CEO of Catholic Charities. So he's going deeper than that. He's taking a more personal level. Um, and then Brene Brown, um, my favorite person, uh, well, one of the top three, I would say, <laughs> um, University of Houston. She's got her researcher, storyteller, courage, courage builder. So sprinkle in a fun fact and what you really do stand for that makes you stand out. And then, okay, the power of a personal brand. This is not a personal branding session. This is on how to up your LinkedIn strategy, how to get noticed how to make an impact. But at the end of the day, social media is everything and standing out is very important. Otherwise, you're just gonna feed right back into that noise on social media. 92% um, of consumers trust reviews from individuals over brands. So that means your recommendation section on your profile, those active testimonials are huge. People are researching before they make a purchase or decide to go with a vendor. So having reviews just on Google or Yelp isn't going to cut it anymore. You need to use your LinkedIn profile. And it takes five to seven impressions for someone to remember a brand. That's why these email campaigns are so important when you see people on the, the digital marketing email campaigns, they have tons of follow-ups. So it's important that you're constantly out there creating authentic content to be remembered, to keep popping up and showing up. Oops, go back. All right, the about and the media section. Formally, your summary section, it's now the about section, should, because it should be more about you versus a summary about what you do and what your business does if you're highlighting that business. Um, you wanna share a story from your own voice. You don't wanna say, Chantal Sumas is a marketing expert who believes in equality and all this stuff. You wanna talk about your story. You know, ever since I was a young girl, I've been addicted to creativity and creating fairy houses with my mom and all of these things. And people can connect with these little things and pull out the little quirks. And um, that's how those anecdotes are remembered and the inside jokes begin. You want to include brag worthy results. This is the time to brag about yourself. You want to toot your own horn, put the humble sauce away and highlight it, showcase your strengths so that you are the go-to professional for what you offer. And don't forget your call to action. What do you want people to do when they get to your profile? Do you want them to reach out to you for, to get a free quote for your design services? Do you want them to have a virtual coffee with you? There's a lot of different calls to actions that you can play with in terms of your personal brand and your business strategic goals. And then upload awards, media mentions, interviews, all of that to your, to your media section, which is now, it's been changed. Uh, LinkedIn just did a big update and they have a featured section, which features your most recent articles. Um, you can choose what it features. And here's a little example of my background. Um, the about section, it has that first person story and it has all of this media, that's the media I was talking to. So different speaking engagements that you will plan to be participating in, you could use that to market it. Um, and then include your call to action here. You know, I have my marketing consulting, connections limited, be sure to follow, et cetera. It's really a, a good, uh, and then my banner image, I hold this together. And, and again, I'm not saying that I'm, this is the only way to do it. I'm just giving you ideas. But I uh, highlighted this, the speaking profile picture because I was, was noticing when I was really respecting and admiring and pushing that connect button with people who were on stages, they looked so impressive. I wanted to give that vibe off too. So I included that as well as the different publications to be published in. Any questions so far, Kristen? No, I'm not seeing any right now. Do you guys have anything you want to type in? Just give it a sec. No, I think we're, we're good. Good stuff.
All right, so um, here's another example. Judy Fox, she started doing more live business, uh, live video consulting, digital media. So she has her call to actions here. Follow hashtag Fox Rocks. Listen to the Judy Fox podcast. Follow Instagram Judy Fox. These are all great calls to actions that when people wanna know more about you, they can see that right there in your about section. It's a mini website just for you. All right, profile basics, background skills, endorsements, and recommendations. Again, these recommendations are gold. This is your Google reviews, your Yelp. Um, this is a very important section to highlight and research your clients to leave a testimonial or even your past coworkers. Um, and you can give to receive too by leaving them a recommendation because people love to reciprocate when they're gifted an item. They need to say thank you in some way. According to Harvard Business Review, 65% of decision makers see online search as the most trusted source of information. Amplifying the importance of making sure that your digital reputation is as strong as it possibly can be. And 53% of decision makers have eliminated a vendor from consideration based on information they did or did not find about an employee online. We've all seen those horror stories about stuff somebody shared that they probably shouldn't have shared and got canned because of it. And these are still reasonable um, ways of, of monitoring employee activity, et cetera. So make sure that what you're sharing and you're doing is very um, intentional in the best way possible. So Chantal, I'm just gonna pause you for a second. You did get, yeah. um, a can't really hear the dog, so don't worry about him. <laughs> um, <laughs> a happy belated birthday, since you mentioned when your birthday was when you started your company. Oh, um, and also, you're a rock star. So. Oh. <laughs> uh, and then one question for you. Yeah, very well rounded. Um, so, how do you get recommendations, or who do you, who should you ask for a recommendation from? Do you have any advice there? Yes. So, at, well, okay. So we want to make sure that your skills are completely solidified. If you are a job seeker, I, I'll get back to that recommendations in a moment. Sure. Um, but we don't want to overstep the skills section because when you're applying for jobs, if you're a job seeker, you get matched up to jobs based on the skills that you outline and the positions that are listed for somebody like you. So if you go to the job listing and you see skills that you don't match up on, you wanna make sure you add those skills right away to your profile. Um, but then, so endorsements and recommendations. I suggest that people give. So go to 100 connections or, or 25 connections and endorse them or, and write recommendations. Just go give, 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 give all over their profile. And then you can also request at that same time while you're on that profile writing a recommendation um, you can select ask for a recommendation. That way, you two birds, one stone. You get it all out of the park at the same time. I suggest uh, 10, to, 10 to 25 recommendations because the, the more you have, right, the more valuable it is and the, the more credible you become. Um, so, and I have this here, complete your background section by adding detail, making sure that and, and I'll get there shortly, but the re recommendations, give, 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 then ask, right? That's the Gary V book, jab, 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 right hook. Does that answer your question, Kristen? Yep, I think so, yep, that's good. So here's how, right? Michael Cortina is an amazing person who's attended many LinkedIn local Milwaukee's with me. Um, you can ask for the recommendation and recommend. So what I did was I wrote this recommendation to Michael and then I asked him for one. Um, all at the same time. Oops. So that's how it looks. That's where that section is for, for the, the newer users of LinkedIn to really make sure you're amplifying that section and, and using it to your um, benefit. And then the background. Um, a lot of people don't realize there's a really awesome hack that you can use here. And that's adding every single service that you offer into your background section as unique job titles. So for example, my, my profile's on the side here, LinkedIn local, I'm a host in Chicago, Madison, and Milwaukee. And I wanna make sure that I show up when people are looking for things to do in Chicago, Madison, or Milwaukee, 
So I have all of those outlined as individual job titles. Now, how is that done for um, Olya and Steve Dobbs with Gravity Photo Company? They included that they um, headshot and personal branding photographer is its own entity with a bunch of background there and examples. Then you have family photographer. Then below that, you have wedding photographer. So all of this data, when somebody searches for family photographer Madison, Wisconsin on Google, LinkedIn will populate because LinkedIn has a perfect search engine optimization score of 100, which is huge. So Google and Bing love it. They trust it so much and the content on it, and it comes up in search results, which is another reason why we should all have a LinkedIn strategy. Does this make sense? Do I need to clarify anything here with the different job entries for different services that you offer? I think it does. I haven't, I haven't heard that one before. So that's a good tip, which good. makes a lot of sense for when people are Googling the services that you offer. If it just says photographer, they don't know what type. Yes, absolutely. Amazing info. I had no idea. Sounds good. great. So great. Good. Uh, and then above all, something that we probably overlook, go to your settings. Everybody after this, please go to your LinkedIn settings and make sure that your profile is set to public. Because if you're set to private, you're not populating. Your beautiful face is not coming up in the feed and it's hiding some, some good information about you if you are a service provider. You wanna be found. So adjust those, um, those uh, details in your security settings. Okay, engagement etiquette. <laughs> So rhetoric is a very important thing. Communications, obviously, there's a reason why we pay people thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to manage our crisis communications. Rhetoric is important. So when you are engaging on um, different posts or sending a, a custom connection request, it's important to be intentional and strategic about your communications. Be kind and approachable. Um, you don't need to overuse emojis to, to be friendly <laughs> with a bunch of happy faces but um there i feel like this is elementary but a lot of people overlook these details always 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 include a custom connection request when you hit that connect button make sure you're including a reason why you're connecting with them this way it opens the doors to conversation you can um really leave an icebreaker there and encourage somebody to, to reach back out because if they are a potential lead, this is how the dialogue begins. And never pitch in a request. How many of you have received that pitch after you connect with somebody or, or they send what they do and what they're offering right away in that connection request? Do you accept that request? <laughs> No. <laughs> no. <laughs> ah, it's, it makes you feel, you know, like unneeded, unwanted. You're just a number to them. It's not good. So don't do it. Here are a couple of really great examples. If you go to somebody's profile and they look like they would be a great candidate, um, maybe you're a life coach and you teach working moms and you go to a, a person's profile and you want to connect with them and build a strong relationship right off the bat, read an article of theirs and give them a compliment on their article. Um, for example, Ava Gannert here said, Dear Chantal, I read your article, Dear Working Warrior from January last year, well written. I know it's a bit late, but I added a comment to make sure it reaches a few more people. This person nailed it. They are very, very valuable. They're showing me that they are like fanning my flame to get my reach out there, which is great. This is what we need more of in the world, right? Of course, I'm gonna be your best friend. Um, but these are good examples to get that going, to make sure that you're letting in the right people and you're also reaching out to the right people and encouraging that dialogue. Um, and then I had some bad examples in there before, but people who just say hi, um, usually just ignore all of those ones. <laughs> Um, people who pitch right away, you know, um, where their heart is at and um, be selective about your community. You have a reason to have high standards. You should definitely keep those standards 
because you are the only you in the entire universe, which makes you pretty special. So be considerate and selective about the community that you build. Um, and then connection webbing. This is a great way to build your community, to drive conversations and make sure that you have the highest quality connections there is, not just for your business, but for yourself. Because when people go into LinkedIn, they're going in there to learn. That's the reason why I navigated to it immediately. It was like um, just this magnetic feeling of people here are professional. We're going to lift each other up. We're going to learn. We're not going to troll. It's none of that Facebook stuff. And we wanted to keep it that way, right? So be selective. With connection webbing, this is how you know who your first degree network is. So you can get connections and recommendations and referrals from people in your connection. You know, making sure that your connections and your, I feel like this is something every business needs to do. If you are an independent contractor, a freelancer, a business owner, you need to do an a connection audit every single year. Every year at the same date, maybe in slow season, go through all of your connections, check are they still at the same company? Do they have connections at organizations you want to be connected to? Can they refer you to two connections? Because if you had um, 10 people introduce you to two people each, that's a huge growth. That's amazing. So um, you want to make sure that you're nurturing those connections as well during your audit with different check-ins, just little messages. Voice messages are huge on LinkedIn. You just um, go, you can only do it on mobile. So you have to make sure you're, you're utilizing your cell phone and you just send, it's limited to, to 60 seconds, but they're very effective. There's also video messaging as well. So here's a little example. This is my, uh, my money guy, another local Madison, um, some, some more um, credit to the Madison community. Brian Altos is amazing. If you haven't connected with him yet, you need to. What I've done is um, gone to his connections and seen who can in he introduce me to that would be a good fit for me and having a, a professional relationship with the scene. Maybe they need some personal branding help, who knows? So I click on his 500 connections and then all of these second degree connections come up. And these are all people who I can ask if, um, if he can make a, an introduction for me. There's other ways of filtering it as well. So say I really want a corporate sponsorship for my Leukemia Lymphoma Society fundraiser uh, from, some, from American Family Insurance. So I can search in the filters to find if he's connected to anybody at AmFam. Uh, the filters are really amazing and another reason why I love premium. Does anybody have questions about connection web webbing? It's pretty self-explanatory to build your, your community. Good, okay. Yeah. So these are all newer features that you may have missed that I wanna make sure you are all very aware of. Um, smart replies are newer within the last year and a half that Microsoft helped develop in the code, which is those quick responses. Whenever you get a million happy birthdays, you can just quickly go through and say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to every single one of them. Um, trending feature. You can now see if you're trending, which is kind of a, uh, has, if anybody's been trending here, you should definitely drop me a note in the chat. Because if you're using a hashtag that can be trend, trending, um, you can get a notification that you are trending on that hashtag, which is really cool. And it, it's a way of LinkedIn saying, keep it up, keep posting, we wanna see more from you. Video and voice messages. Again, if you, these are amazing lead nurturing strategies for businesses. Make sure you're using the voice messages and video messaging because it is so much more human. And when people hear your voice or they see your face, they feel more compelled to respond. So the response rates go way, way, way up. There's also a way to notify employees on, of page posts. When you're using your corporate page, you're using your business page, you can select to notify employees. So anybody who's connected to your company gets notified anytime that company page send something out. So that can increase your engagement and your reach and making sure that it gets in front of other 
circles. The QR connection or find nearby, I went over that a little bit. It's a great tool to use when people forget their business cards. The featured content section, again, that's new. That is uh, underneath your summary or about section. And then stories. We were just found out that stories like on Instagram and on Facebook, they're coming to LinkedIn. Um, slowly but surely, it'll be in beta for a while and just select users will have access as well as LinkedIn Live. We, that's not on here, but there is LinkedIn Live capabilities. You have to apply for it. If you're interested in doing it, you can totally do it. There are some rules and regulations for it, but it's a great tool to use. Um, Chantel, we've got a couple questions here. Is yes. there a way to bulk unconnect to a group of people? If you so say you've got a whole bunch of people you don't want to be connected to, is there a way to, to unconnect? No, mass yeah. unconnect. individually or unfollow one by one. Okay, and any of those features that you're just talking about, are those features on the premium only or can you get it with a free account? Like the voice they, messaging? They're all, voice messaging should be included with everything. Video messaging I think is still in beta, so not everybody has access to it. Um, but the rest should all be available. Um, stories, again, that's coming soon, that's in beta. Uh, featured is still getting rolled out. I just got access to it a few days ago, but Jared Weezy or our Middleton Jared, he uh, had it for like a couple months. So I was, of course, super envious about that. Everything takes time. Everything does. Um, another one, what do you post on features? So that's your media section, right? That's when you're uploading the, the um, articles you've been featured in, um, magazines like In Business Madison, if you were highlighted there, make it a PDF and upload it to your featured section. Um, anything that gives you credibility or is a good resource, videos, YouTube videos, you can include there. And can you provide an example of why and when to use the story feature? I think you kind of just did, but. On LinkedIn? Mm-hmm. I think that's a, a really, it's gonna be really exciting to see how this is used. That's why it's in beta first, so we can see if people are going to be using it wisely and effectively. Announcements, introducing people to new employees, um, new CEOs, new C-suite. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of really interesting creative ways. Also, this will help people in the B2C, business to consumer area rise up because then they can give you insight and access to new products and services that you can highlight with the, the stories. Also testimonials, if you meet up with a, a client, you can make a story right there, an open referral recommendation from that client, save that video and use that in media later. There's a lot of Really awesome ideas that are popping to my head that I'm really excited to use, but we'll see when it comes out. So to break it all down for you, um, I wanted to make sure that I outlined every single thing that you can do right now to level up your profile. What can you do? Update your profile image. I think everybody should update the profile image once a year to keep it fresh. We all change a lot. We all may think we look the exact same than we, that we did 10 years ago, but um, fact is probably not. So, um, but, and it's also a good reason for people to click on your profile. Oh, I haven't seen that new image. Let's go check on what they're doing. Um, design a banner image. You can do this in any tool. I am so sneaky. I don't use anything fancy like Adobe Photoshop or InDesign. I use PowerPoint. I just adjust my slide to measure four by one. So four by one. And then you can include different um, images there. You can include different logos. Super easy piece of cake. And then you just save it as a JPEG. Um, update your title and play on your personality. Make sure to use capitalize each word, okay? Write your story and add it to your about section. Tell it as you would tell somebody that you're just meeting over coffee. Find media. Don't have media? Start applying to podcasts. Everybody, write this down. Spotagast.com. 
it's a weekly newsletter that reaches out to people who are looking for certain guests to have on their podcasts. They usually have 10 to 20 different podcasts a week and they're searching for hosts, spotaguest.com. Um, and that's a great way to just get some more exposure. They usually hook you up with free media elements so you can promote it to your community to get the podcast more listens or more listeners. And then add 50 skills and endorse and recommend your connections. Go do that today so that you can really amplify your presence on LinkedIn. Master your background and experience. So go in there and make sure you're adding all the details that you possibly can to each role so that you're found in searches on LinkedIn and Google and Bing. Um, because if it's not there and that content isn't ready to be found, you're not going to get found. You're going to be overlooked and you're going to miss out on so many opportunities. And then attend the next event. So I'm hoping to do another Zoom um, with the uh, Middleton Chamber. We've got that we'll be diving into the content side of things. Today we highlighted all the basics on your profile and what it means to stand up and level up. Um, the, the next half of this information without overwhelming you is setting goals. What kind of content are you trying to create? Because you need to align it to your business goals. Content formats, there's so many kinds. Content do's and don'ts. Definitely focusing on the don'ts to make sure you aren't doing some of those faux pas. Hashtags, tagging, campaigns, and engagement tricks. Um, so if anybody has any questions about any content, even if it's related to the next presentation, I'd be happy to address it now um, through you, Kristen, or um, yeah. I do. Yep. I have uh, another question in chat. Perfect. There are so many different social platforms. How do you make best use of your time? For instance, for a B2B company, how much time do you spend personally on LinkedIn versus Twitter when we also have some people watching these feeds for our company? That's a really great question and you need to use that wisely. It's different for everybody. You know, gym and personal fitness instructors usually find their fit best on Instagram because of the visual capabilities and offering those solutions. For designers and graphic designers, the marketing side, sales side, LinkedIn is extremely beneficial. So each um, niche has its own fit into social media and you'll find what platforms fit you best, but you really need to experiment and, and see that for yourself. I love LinkedIn. I focused a little tiny bit on Facebook and then minimal as heck on Twitter and um, Instagram because it's just not realistic to focus on all of those evenly. And um, something that we'll talk about in the next presentation on content is that in order for LinkedIn to give you as many points for your content to get you in front of as many people as possible, you have to share it natively on LinkedIn. So you can't use an automated tool like Buffer or Hootsuite or HubSpot. Um, the algorithm can see that and it punishes you in the feed. Um, will we be sharing the PowerPoint? I don't know if we have plans to share the PowerPoint, but we have the recording that um, we'll probably post to the Chamber's YouTube page and then send that out to you guys so you have it there. So. Um, do you have a date picked out for the next event? We do. Uh, I don't remember. I should have looked at the specific date. It's in June. So um, Chantel will be back with us. We're hoping that we'll be back in person to do this session live. And, um, but it's the on-track session for June. So if you guys look at the chamber calendar, that will be there. Mm -hmm. um, if Chantel had one item to make someone's LinkedIn profile stand out, what would it be? Ooh. All of those. <laughs> <laughs> All those tips. I can't believe favorites. Um, but I, I really do believe in the quality of visual representation because it's a, a way to see your soul, uh, as cheesy as that sounds. So make the investment in yourself, get those high quality photos, work with the experts at Gravity or Miriam Vulture, your local photographers. It really um, does represent you well and paints a good picture for you. Awesome. After you get the introduction to a potential nonprofit donor, what is your next step? 
What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. So I think they're, they're saying, so if you get, if you make a connection or you get introduced to someone that you think could be a, a, a someone that would donate to your nonprofit, how do you approach it next? Yeah. Get on a call right away. Get on a video call if you can, because that really does emphasize that relationship. Videos work way better and way more effective than regular phone calls or emails. I only use LinkedIn and Facebook. Am I missing opportunities by not using Twitter or other social media? I can't keep up with everything. It's unrealistic to keep up with everything. I think you're doing a great job so long as you do prioritize your quality over quantity, making sure that the items that you do share and the people that you do connect with are the most quality, top-notch people that you can and the top-notch quality of content that you can. That makes a difference. It stands out and it paints you in a very, very, very good light so that you are credible and you're reliable and you are top of mind. Perfect. Don't have any other ones unless you guys have more to share. I think we're good. We have five more minutes. I don't know. <laughs> what other secrets good. can I do about LinkedIn? <laughs> oh, we did get one more from Tara. Um, I just tried to sort my connections. Can you show us how to audit? Ooh, do an audit? Mm hmm I could. Um, it's, so what you should do is you should, here, let me share my screen quick. Do you want to <laughs> do your last slide? Sure. I'll do, oh, sure. We'll plug a few more things and then we can, if you guys have time to stay on, we can show you that. Um, so sure. just again, thank you guys for taking time out of your busy schedules um, to, to support the chamber and, and be on this event. Um, a big shout out again to H. Kruger and Total Wine. Um, do we have one more, Chantel? One more slide? Oh, Sorry. nope. Nope. Okay. Um, I do want to plug next week's event. We are going to be back with another on track session for um, social oh, media. Here. There it is. Okay. Um, for next Thursday, April 9th at noon, we're going to be doing how to advertise on Facebook. So again, that's up on the website if you guys want to register for it. I am right now going to send you a link through the chat that is an evaluation form for today. So if you guys have a few minutes to kind of give us some feedback on what you thought. Um, and then also want to plug the Chamber's resource page. So we've been working really hard to try to, to help you guys navigate through all the information that's coming from the federal government, the state, uh, local communities, and we've developed this resource page on our website to kind of help um, give you the best and most current information. So if, um, I would encourage you guys to go there and visit it if you have questions. So, um, I think that was it for me. So if you want to pop back to the audit thing, we can do that. And I think- Yeah, you guys sure. Um, if anybody's needs anything else demoed, um, I can do that as well. I usually have LinkedIn right up, but um, okay, let's share my screen instead of my <laughs> presentation. Here we go. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so when you go to my network up top. And then you go to connections, um, go to your connections, and then you can do an audit based on location first. That's what I would suggest um, for any kind of in-person events or something along those lines. You search with filters. These filters are amazing. Um, you go to all filters up top here. So many different things that you can filter by. You can filter by country you can fil filter by current companies to see who you have at a certain company if you have a very large network um, you can search by so many other things so here i'm going to do location madison area and that's another tip for anybody here who is in middleton or a smaller suburb of madison make sure you're updating your location to madison wisconsin area because it um, does put you into a lot more search results. All right, so then I'm gonna apply this filter for Madison and I'm gonna see, you're gonna look at all of my connections and see who I've got here. Um, but then you can go in one by one and message. Um, hey Steve, what's going on? Still at um, Extract Systems? Do you guys need any help with your marketing and branding strategy? 
I'm your girl. Don't forget me. You know, something like that. Um, little by little, one by one. It is a very exhausting um, strategy. You can go in and you can disconnect with people if you see that there's people on your da database that you don't think are serving you. I don't know um, if you would want to do that unless they're just annoying you in terms of the content that they're sending, people with, um, you know, politics and religion. It is still a professional platform. So there are things that you do avoid bringing to light unless it is part of your business specifically. Um, but yeah, does that make sense? You can go through if you want to see, um, here, we're going to put Elise on the spot here. <laughs> um, I can go through her connections and see who she's got and her connection that she could introduce me to. Um, a lot of different people here, these are all second, which is great because then I know that I'm not connected to them yet. They probably don't know me. So having a, a warm introduction from Elise would make it so much stronger. Does that make sense in terms of knowing who you have, how to search for who you have in your database and nurture them? We're getting some head nods, so we're good. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> great, great. Awesome. Um, and then I can kind of show you since we're all still here, my home, I'll show you a little bit more about the, the interface here so you can utilize as many tools as you have. Um, right here on the, I'm going to have you focus on this side here. This is um, the most informational section that you can find. This who's viewed your profile is gold. These are potential leads. These are potential clients. So clicking on that and seeing who's checked you out, um, it's very interesting to see, especially based on the, the trends here. You can see that it really dipped down when I stopped creating content and then um, do skyrocketed on my birthday for all my birthday wishes. <laughs> um, but you can go through and you can see all of these second degree people and message them send them a little message saying, hey, I saw you were poking around my profile. Um, is there anything I can help you with? I, I love making new connections. I'm low on, on connection space, but um, let's chat. Let's schedule a virtual coffee or something like that. And then last but not least, there's a couple other. Oh, one more question. Are those only available sure. in premium to see your, who's the check to your yes. profile? Okay. Yeah. Um, this, um, here, groups, you can be in a lot of different groups. I really value my digital marketing group so I can constantly learn from the new features of other social media platforms and tools, as well as hashtags. So this is a, ha a hack that I was going to share at the next one, but I'm going to do it real quick since we have my, my, um, my profile open. If you want to see the most followed hashtag so that you can use that hashtag and show up where everybody is, you go to this discover more section on the hashtag section, click it, and then you will see all these hashtags and the amount of followers each one has. Look at coronavirus. It already has 187,000 followers. COVID-19, almost 200,000. Leadership is one I use often because it has 2.2 million followers, which I want to get in front of those 2.2 million, so I'm going to use that hashtag. Anyways, I hope that helps cl clear up any kind of confusion that you may have had about LinkedIn and taking your profile to the next level to make the most out of it. Yep, I think maybe just one more quick question here and then we'll let everybody go. Sure. Can premium only be purchased as an individual or is there a premium version for a company where several people can share it? There is a business option where you can have, I think it starts giving you benefits at three users, three or four users. So it's a team okay. and you also have access to like group messaging centers and stuff like that, which is okay if, if that's something that you're looking for, but not everybody is very, is open like that. A lot of people are very protective about their space and their profile. So it's something that you kind of have to sell your team members on. Sure. Great. Awesome. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Like I said, if you're available, Next week, Thursday, we're going to do this again on Facebook advertising. Um, and then I did put the link for the, the feedback form in the chat button. We'd love to have you fill that out. Huge thank you to Chantel. Um, hopefully, we can do this in person in June with you. Thank you. Let's hope. Awesome. If yes. not, we'll be virtual. <laughs> we will. 
We will be back. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much. Bye.